Hello, this is talk number 34 in a series from the textbook Principles of Biochemistry, authored by Albert Leninger, 7th edition. Uh, we will uh, wrap this uh, talk up with gene regulation and discuss uh, elements of, uh, of uh, the way that uh, genes process and are activated uh, at a given moment. So when we talk about gene regulation, only a fraction of genes are active at a given time. We talk about induction, which is a process of increasing gene activity. Repression is a process of inhibiting gene activity. There are promoter sites where RNA polymerase binds and affects transcription. Regulatory proteins affect this process. Long non-coding RNAs have a variety of roles apart from translation such as regulation, post-transcriptional gene silencing, and histone modification. Operons are clusters of genes in a prokaryote which are transcribed together, usually two to six genes, all of which are subject to a common set of regulatory agents. We talk about the lac operon, which codes for three enzymes which remove lactose-derived toxins from the prokaryotic cell. Regulatory proteins bind specifically to base pair domains on DNA. Usually these are inverted repeat sequences. The recognition sequence on a protein has the structure of a helix turn helix. Uh, so this is an example of uh, alpha helices involved in tetramer formation here. And these, uh, these alpha helices there, and you can see their abrupt turns Oftentimes, these are related to uh, uh, specific uh, functions of the uh, molecule with uh, recognition helix, uh, hel recognition helices, and turns that occur here. A zinc finger is an example where a zinc ion stabilizes a component of a regulatory protein, allowing an interaction with DNA. We also have leucine zippers. These are a series of leucines at every seventh position, and a basic helix loop helix with a contact side is a loop component. This is another type of regulatory mechanism. And there's a combinational control where a fewer number of protons can regulate many genes, different domains can function to expand recognition. Uh, in, a, in bacterial gene expression, when glucose is insufficient, cyclic AMP binds to the site near the lac promoter increases transcription. These pathways and those of amino acid synthesis are subject to feedback transcription attenuation. The attenuator, the attenuator is a GC-rich region of the genome where inhibition occurs. Regulation can also occur by small RNA molecules which require cofactors called six, cis or trans respectively defined as the same molecule or acting through a separate molecule. So as genetic re recombination is a regulatory tool, one example is the flagellum on Salmonella typhimurium, which has seven genes for production and they can be turned on or off to evade an immune response. In eukaryotic gene expression, this is more complex and regulated than in prokaryotes. Euchromatin is more dispersed and available for function. Heterochromatin is condensed, and this is a structural form not subject to function. And a trans a transitions between heterochromatin and euchromatin require chromatin remodeling, which is a family of complexes in four large groups, SW1, SNF, ISW1, CHD, and IND80. And histones, which are basic proteins, uh, are also modified uh, chemically. When I say basic, I mean they have uh, uh, asparagine, they have uh, arginine, they have uh, uh, glutamine, uh, ami uh, amino groups. As in prokaryotes, a relatively more limited number of regulatory pro uh, proteins can control multiple genes, recognize base sequences, and uh, tertiary structure and cofactor dependence. And they act in series in parallel. The, react, the regulatory agents have discrete uh, structural and sequence domains. 
The role of steroid hormones, hormones can air the cell either alone or bound to a carrier, usually the latter. They can do traverse the nuclear membrane and activate the gene target. So we've seen examples of this before. Uh, we have here a, a hormone right there with the plasma membrane and there is a, a, a complex here which uh, dissociates. The hormone uh, is, uh, binds to that with the displacement uh, and the, this complex enters the nucleus where the presence of this hormone causes uh, a, 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 a activation with the adherence of uh, a POL2. The target gene is over here and you get increased uh, transcription to messenger RNA and then increased protein. So these are good, uh, this is one method by which you can have an anabolic uh, reaction, a series of anabolic reactions with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, induction caused by the hormonal presence. Alternatively, in the plasma membrane, hormone can uh, act as a cytoplasm and then the nuclear membrane, and you can get much the same process with uh, co-repressors and uh, uh, the target gene here with uh, messenger RNA uh, increased protein and change of cell function. So these are uh, mechanisms by where you get uh, uh, monomeric type uh, structures over here and over here you get type 2 receptors and these are always in the nucleus. These receptors are always in the nucleus where in this uh, case you can get initial binding in the cytoplasm type 1 and here's type 2 receptors. Translational uh, repression is affected through protein kinase phosphorylation as direct binding to messenger RNA, binding proteins uh, which interfere with translation factors and messenger RNA mediated gene expression. The uh, special function RNAs are involved in gene regulation. There are micro RNAs, these are small RNA molecules which inhibit gene expression. There is RNA interference, and these are part of the group of non-coding RNAs, which possess a variety of functions. And then finally, there are stem cells. These are totipotent cells, which are capable of differentiation. They're seen in the morula phase of embryogenesis, and the microenvironment governs the path of differentiation. And this com uh, concludes the uh, series of specific uh, biochem texts. Uh, uh, lectures uh, covering the uh, the entire book. We will have uh, lecture number 35, which will deal with historical landmarks of biochemistry, and that will uh, conclude uh, what uh, turned out to be a 35 lecture series. And thank you very much.